COVID, no COVID, it doesn't matter. Our doors are going to be open uh, for you guys to acquire this information. Uh, we're going to be bringing also other speakers. It's not just going to be me, so you can get tired of this ugly face, right? Uh, for example, October, November 3rd already, we got confirmed to speak. Uh, Timmy Blends, uh, the founder of Timmy Blends, uh, her name is Adi uh, Arizini is her last name, and she has built a very powerful business that does over $50 million a year. She's a young girl, younger than me, uh, and uh, she's a powerhouse. Now, she has one strategy that we haven't done here, not even remotely close, as well as she has, and she, her subject has been influencer marketing, which is a really big opportunity. So that's going to happen November 3rd, if you guys want to um, mark your calendars, because she's going to teach us, including myself, I'm going to be sitting here listening to her, uh, the process that she's done to contact people that have huge followings, to have these people talk about your products and your services in exchange for some money. Usually that's what they, they require. Some of these people that have large followings, they don't even know how to price themselves. They don't understand what their value of the attention that they have is. So you have the ability to, if you have a, an, a brand that you want to promote, you can contact these people and say, look, can you promote my product? This is how much I'm going to pay you. And that ends up being very, very affordable marketing because it has a lot of attention. So that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about Organic content, which is also very important. Why? Because organic basically is used in the world of marketing to mean something that you're not investing money in. We know organic food, right? On the world of uh, content, or there's two, two types of content. There's organic, and then there's paid. The paid is the one that you give money to Facebook, to Instagram, to TikTok, to YouTube, so you can get more people to see your content. The organic one is giving it, using the platforms and pressing the buttons so you can get the attention of people around the world for free. All you got to do is create the content. And that is incredibly important because when you're growing a business at the early stages, cash is oxygen. Your money keeps you going. If you spend it on advertising, hoping that you get a return, and keyword being hope, you have potentially put your business in danger because you're running out of oxygen. So using platforms that allow you to spread a message without having to spend the dollars on it, it is an incredible opportunity. Uh, a lot of the brands that we work here every day, including my own brand called Natural Slim, we are really big in organic. Other people that I worked with for many years, like Dr. Eric Berg, who's been with me for over four years now, he has a humongous following, organic. He does not have to pay a single penny to make his phones ring or to make his sales come in to either Shopify, to his websites, to uh, Amazon. They come in all the time because he has a really good organic content strategy. The uh, one and only Chick Corea, who Kirby's here from, from his team, that he passed away sadly earlier this year, he had a great organic content. And we would put his content out there on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. He would get a lot of attention. And we did not have to pay for that. So that makes it easier for us to sell Chick's books, Chick's academy that he had going on for a while. All those things, make, it makes it easier when you're getting a lot of attention. That's why the name of our company is Attention Grabbing Media. Because anything that you can do to leverage the subject of attention, that's something that you want to jump all over it. So I mentioned to you guys, if you want to put it on your calendar, November 3rd, I recommend that you guys get on the list of these workshops because we're going to keep on bringing a lot of people. Uh, there's a QR code that you guys uh, have on your desk for the ones that are here. That's going to give you a couple of things. Number one, it's going to put you on our list. So we're going to let you know of uh, all the upcoming workshops. Some of you guys already are on our list. Number two, you're going to have access to, to today's slides. You're going to want to get those slides, especially if you're a practitioner if you like to work on things and get things done so you can get results, you're going to want to incorporate the strategy that we're going to be talking about today. And number three, I'm going to invite all of you guys, whether you're on the stream, on Facebook, or on YouTube, to register for an announcement that I have going on tomorrow. If you guys don't know, uh, I have uh, been running 
training and coaching for many years now. Uh, I go back to 2017, um, giving people education on the subject of marketing. So it's been quite a while, and I've always had paid programs uh, that I um, have people come into my programs to learn about the things that I do to capture attention, generate revenue, and expand the business. Tomorrow I have a big announcement because I'm doing something for the first time that I've never done before, which is a combination of um, a couple of elements which have to do with training and also our services that we're really good at here at AGM. So anybody that wants to potentially find out how we can help them um, without having to spend a lot of money, then you want to register for that announcement tomorrow. That's happening tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And yes, there will be a replay if anybody cannot make it because they have uh, to attend work, which I understand. If anybody wants to register over the stream and you don't have the QR code, I will show the QR code later, but you can just save this link, agmagency.com forward slash ninjas, ninjas. And if you save that link and if you uh, go to it, it's going to open up a messenger window Facebook Messenger will be required for this, and you're going to have the opportunity to get the slides and also to register for this announcement tomorrow, all right? So without further ado, let's get started with today's presentation. Uh, this one, I put a lot of energy, uh, me and a couple of people from my team, because this is a very important one. It's something that if you put this in place and if you do it correctly for your brand, whether you're a personal brand or you have an e-commerce brand or you're trying to sell a service, no matter what it is you're trying to do, if you put this in place, it's going to dramatically increase your potential for success and for scaling and for expansion. All right, so we're going to go over the process of attention grabbing without having to spend a single penny. So the first thing that I would ask uh, is why would you guys pay attention to me, uh, this random Latin American dude that might just be making up things along the way. Well, for those of you guys who don't know me, I know some of you guys here already know me. Some people on the stream, a lot of you guys already are familiar with me. That's why you're here. But I've been doing a lot of this for quite a while. Uh, we built this channel from scratch, uh, literally in my house in 2013. Uh, October 2013, eight years ago, we uploaded the first ever video for my dad's YouTube channel. Uh, so we have now over 2,000 videos on his content and still beyond my dad's uh, body, we're still getting hundreds of thousands of new people subscribing to our channel every single month, which is by definition legacy, something that goes beyond one body. So we're really deep into that world of my dad's content because it helps a lot of people. So we built a channel that has almost 5 million subscribers and growing fast still even though my, past, uh, my dad passed seven months ago already, that channel is still getting attention and being discovered by people every single day. Even if somebody's not around anymore, sometimes we don't even realize how many people out there did not have the privilege of getting to know that person while they were alive. So it's a responsibility that I have because we've been saving people and giving them education for so long, but there's only a small percentage of people that have actually been introduced to my dad's content. Legacy. What does my dad want? My dad wanted to reach a lot of people. And he wanted to continue moving forward and capturing the attention of people. If you go to this page right here, which you can find it by searching on YouTube, Metabolismo TV, and if you click on channels, you will see how serious we are. Because we have actually now translated his content to nine different languages. And you're going to find several hundred episodes that are, we're still doing it every single day in German, in Russian, in Italian, in French, in uh, Arabic, in um, I lost, uh, and, and Dutch. And, and uh, we, we went really deep with pushing my dad's message. And that's something that we're doing. And some of these channels already have thousands of subscribers and growing every single day. So that's legacy. Uh, we have our Natural Slim channel, which we also have built from scratch. 188,000 subscribers on the channel, getting a lot of attention. Some of you guys are familiar with Dr. Eric Berg. We've been working on this channel since Dr. Berg had 250,000 subscribers on it only. And he's about to break 6 million subscribers right now today. Uh, in this, probably in the next month. Damon Johns, which is what um, a lot of people know him as the people's shark. Uh, he is somebody that we've been working on uh, on his accounts for a while. He has 36,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. Shakes, obviously, we got a pleasure of working with him for quite a while on his content. And uh, this is my YouTube channel, in which we pump out content every single day in the subject of marketing. Uh, we repeat this on Facebook, 
hundreds of thousands, millions of followers for my dad, millions of followers for Dr. Berg, um, our, our Facebook page, Natural Slim, over 400,000 followers on it, and uh, Chicks, uh, 738,000 followers. Uh, my own Facebook page has 19,000 followers. What does all that mean? It only means that I'm getting organic content distribution. A number of followers doesn't mean revenue, it just means an opportunity to capture the attention of people that otherwise I wouldn't be able to capture. A follower is not a guaranteed customer. A follower is somebody that created that first connection with you. And now your job is to continue building that relationship until they eventually purchase from you. Trust you enough to purchase. So you're building credibility, you're building trust every step of the way. Still today in our natural slim brand, which has gotten quite big uh, at this point, we get people calling us that say, I have been listening to your content for four years. And finally today, I made a decision that I'm going to buy your products. Even though you have made my life better, you have helped me by doing this, by doing that, I never actually invested in your products. So it tells you that the value of just keeping it going, continuing, it really does pay off with time. This is not overnight. This is not if you guys are gonna start doing content tomorrow and suddenly next week you guys are gonna be flooded with clients. It doesn't work like that. It is a process, it is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And you gotta just put your head down and do it consistently because it really does work. We now have a business because of all our work in our natural slim content over the last decade, we have an incredible team that has been doing this for quite a while. We now have a business that has stability and will continue growing no matter what because we put the content together and we keep it going. So why do you need an organic strategy? Your goal is to establish omnipresence. The word omnipresence is something that I like to use in the subject of marketing. If you think about how religion uses it, God is everywhere, everywhere around the universe. Wherever you go, you cannot hide from God. Omnipresence in marketing is defined as being on every single platform that allows you to press a few buttons and be out there in the world. We have the ability right now with social media platforms like Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, all these platforms that we can press a few buttons and as long as we have a cell phone signal, we can reach the world. That's something that our ancestors did not have access to. My father did not have the ability when he was building a business in Natural Slim in Puerto Rico in the 1990s to spread a message across the internet. We had to go down the, the traditional route. He did a lot of television ads. We didn't have such a thing as Facebook Live and content on YouTube, none of that stuff. So we take it for granted, but it's something that is quite special and unique to this world. So if you really wanna grow your business, if you really wanna get more attention, if you really wanna scale, then it's gonna be a crucial part of the routine system that you incorporate a content strategy. Content by definition is information that communicates to people what you are all about. That could be your message, how you help somebody else. That could be your services, how you actually deliver a product to somebody that is gonna make them change or improve something. Or that could be information about your products in general. No matter what you're doing out there, content is information, is putting your message out there. And it could be done in many different ways. You can do it via audio, which is also called a podcast. You can do it via videos. You can do it via images. You can do it via graphics, elements, many ways to distribute information. All right? Are you guys seeing the slides in front of you by any chance? They move around also? Great, good. All right, so for example, I'm on Instagram every day. If you look at my, my, my posts, I, I already have 3,059 posts that I've done on that platform. Uh, I'm on YouTube every day. We post content every single day on the platform. I'm on LinkedIn every day. Uh, this is uh, right here, the coach. He has 22,000 followers on Instagram. We call him the coach, Coach Jorge. And then he posts content over there on the subject of marketing. This is Dr. Berg's Pinterest, for example. We get a lot of content on that particular platform distributed. Uh, Natural Slim, our YouTube, this is our TikTok platform right here, 400,000 followers on it. Uh, we're on uh, Facebook for Dr. Berg. We are on my Facebook page. We just are everywhere. A lot of people that are on Facebook are not on Instagram. A lot of people that are on Instagram are not on TikTok. 
all these people have, all these platforms have different people utilizing them every single day. So whenever you are in the platform, you have an opportunity to capture the attention of somebody that you wouldn't have if you weren't there. So if you need more business, me meaning you need more people to service, which we all do, then you need to be everywhere. And I take this seriously. And if you look at what we built over here, this agency, this building, it is the exact same philosophy. If you looked at what I've done for Natural Slam, what I've done for a lot of the brands that I work with, it's the same exact philosophy, rinsed and repeated over and over again. I did not get to this building just by getting some magical pot of gold delivered in front of my door. Uh, we actually went through this process, captured a lot of attention, I got on a lot of stages, I presented my information in front of a lot of people, and I had a lot of people like you guys showing up wanting to get more information about how we can help them. And that led to, to hundreds of people, thousands of people delivered, both customers and students along the way. So omnipresence really is effective. There's not that many that you need to be a part of. Now, I know this could be overwhelming and scary to think about, I don't have time to be everywhere. So what I'm going to show you guys today is the process that we do over here. I'm not giving you guys a theory. I'm going to explain to you the process that we do for every single brand that we manage every single day here at AGM. This is the exact process that we have incorporated successfully on many different companies. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, podcasts, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest. There's not that many of them. You really can count the platforms that are relevant to you and your brand with the, hands of, with the fingers of your hands. So let's not forget the sub-placements for each platform. Sub-placements. A lot of people don't understand this. When they think about Facebook, they just think about Facebook. They don't think about everything that Facebook has inside of the platform. Let me talk to you about specifics here. So for example... And uh, raise your hand if you've seen something called Instagram Reels. Raise your hand. Okay, a lot of you guys, right? Especially, this is more like the younger demographic, maybe the, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the other demographic, the older one is getting slowly into it, like it always happens. But Instagram Reels are uh, shorter form video content, which are vertical pieces of content. Different, different types of fo uh, formats, and they are on fire. And Instagram actually copied what TikTok uh, actually had as a concept. TikTok is the fastest growing platform of all time, social media platform, period. There's no s quickest way to grow in the world today of organic content than on TikTok. And that's still today a fact. Um, we've seen it over and over again. But there's something called placements. So for example, on Facebook, you see something called Facebook Reels now, which by the way, they just started this last week. They just launched it, Facebook Reels. If you open up your Facebook feed and you start browsing for the feed, it's going to present to you a section that has Reels. And they're on fire right now. And they're going to grow, just like they did for Instagram. There's also called Facebook Feed. That's the one that all of you guys know. Something called Facebook Stories. You guys have been seeing Facebook Stories also. YouTube has not only YouTube Video. I don't know who uses YouTube a lot. But YouTube now has YouTube Shorts. These are one-minute Vertical. Most of the content on YouTube is horizontal. That's 99.9% .9 of the content. That's what actually built the YouTube platform. Well, they were feeling the pressure with Facebook, with Instagram, with TikTok, with Snapchat, with all these other vertical content platforms. They were getting a lot of attention of the platform. So they said, you know what? We got to go. We got to get something done. And they did YouTube shorts. And guess what? They are on fire right now. If you have a YouTube channel and you want to get more subscribers and more views, even if you're getting started, YouTube Shorts is a faster way of getting there. And we're seeing it every day. We're doing it with our own content. And it's actually something that is really, really surprising to a lot of people, but it's on fire. The YouTube channel content, and there's something called the YouTube community. YouTube community is like a, it's like a feed, like on Facebook. You got to have a thousand subscribers at least to have access to that right now. But it's like a Facebook feed, and you guys can see it. And uh, if we have enough time, I'll try to give you guys some live examples on how that looks. But this is something that has attention on different places that people are being presented with that content. Instagram has four different placements. Every single one of these has the ability to help you capture attention. Because 
somebody that is on consuming Instagram stories potentially is never going through their Instagram feed. You guys realize that? They just open up Instagram and all they do is they go for the stories. So if you don't put Instagram stories, you're missing out on potential prospects that you can capture the attention of and vice versa. One of the things that I started going heavy at a couple of years ago already, I actually did a podcast the day that this got launched. I believe it's about two and a half years now. Something called Instagram TV. Instagram TV is long form content and it's also on fire. And it has like the ability to upload videos that are up to 10 minutes in length. You can post horizontally on Instagram. It's also a first. You can take the exact same content that you have on YouTube and you can put it on Instagram TV, add some hashtags on it, and that Instagram is gonna help you get more attention for it. It's also a very important platform that you wanna pay attention to. Instagram TV has a standalone app but they connect with Instagram. So whoever your audience is on Instagram would get notified of any new people, of any new content that you post on Instagram TV. They help each other out. Instagram Reels, that has been the one thing that has actually gotten them in competition with TikTok because TikTok was taking too much of their attention. So that Instagram Reels is a very important concept, but these ones are different. Every single one of these Instagram Reels, Instagram Stories, Instagram, Instagram TV, Instagram Feed, they are all slightly different. So you guys might be like right now, well, I'm gonna throw in the towel and I'm just gonna quit and just go work at McDonald's and flip burgers because it's a lot of work, right? No, it is about setting it, creating a system. Once you create a system, you can do this all day long and it doesn't require a lot of people. You can have one person for one brand manage this and just do that. And that help is available right now for you guys to acquire. It's available, we're gonna talk about that in a second. All right. So the concept of placements is something that a lot of people don't look at, but every single platform has many sub placements under it. And that's something that we all need to pay attention to because they're all different and they're all important. Each of these placements, you need to format your content for each platform. So here's examples. Uh, YouTube has a format called 16.9. So for example, if I grab my phone, which Jorge had over here, just to make it very simple, I don't want to um, complicate it too much for you guys. So this is a cell phone. This records incredibly high quality content. The other day we actually had a, a video that um, we saw on TikTok that went viral of a guy that was actually doing a content piece. He was recording with a cinemata cinematography, uh, what is it called? Uh, super high quality cinema camera. Oh, huge device over here for recording movies. And he had it over here hanging and he had an iPhone over here. iPhone 12, this one is an iPhone 13. And he was recording at the same time. And he published those two videos, they almost look exactly the same. A camera that was $10,000 who know how much money with an iPhone. Same, pretty much the same quality. We actually surveyed it. We have 100 staff, we surveyed it, half and half. Some of them said, I like the cinema one better, I like the other one better. It's the same thing, right? So you guys have equipment in your hands that wasn't accessible before, that we can record super high quality content. YouTube, 69. I take content like this sometimes, and I just point it at me, and I put it like a stand, look at that. Jorge right now is recording something. Looks like it, yeah? And um, not recording that way, but that is a horizontal angle right there. You take that video, that goes up in YouTube. That is 16.9. All you need to have is good quality audio. And these things, Kirby, you remember when we were doing Facebook Lives with Chick, right? Yeah, great quality audio. Yeah, so let me tell you, now that I have Kirby here, somebody give me the mic, because I'm gonna ask Kirby something. Kirby is, first of all, a super incredible piano player himself. And second of all, we worked together on, with Chick for quite a while. Right. Uh, you can sit down, I'm gonna ask okay. you a question, okay? Sure. Something that I use as an example, uh, Kirby, that we used to hang out at Chick's house. Right. And, um, and I actually got him upgraded on the phone because he had an iPhone 4 or something like oh, that. Oh, that's right, I remember. And I said, Chick, come on. This is an important, this is an investment for you. You're Chick Corea, come on. So we got him upgraded and he got an iPhone 11. I remember. Was, you remember that? All right. Yeah. So then we started doing um, Facebook lives and YouTube lives at his house. And I remember, I'm never going to forget about it because it gives me goosebumps. Obviously, 
you had a lot more experience working with him than I did, many, many years, right? The, the size of somebody like him is something that we can't compare very easily. This is why this experience was very special. So we recorded the Facebook and YouTube live. And I was by myself at his house, all right, running the show. He finishes the recording on the phone, on the iPhone, all right? We play it back. He listens to it for two minutes, and he said, quiet for a second, he said, Manuel, Steve Jobs would be so proud of what this cell phone can record audio-wise. And he was like, did he want something else than no, not the iPhone? No, he didn't, no. He, we, we spent three or four months trying to replicate the quality of this audio. I'm not kidding. We went to Chick Corea's studio, which was incredible, a lot of equipment, and we could not get it. Right, Kirby? Yeah, no, the iPhone did best. Yeah. The iPhone was always better quality. Yeah. It was incredible. So I'm trying to get rid of excuses here because with these phones, we've come a long way. They, the biggest competitor to the Leicas and to the Nikons and all these cameras are these ones right here. So I now have a lot of more production, right? These cameras right here, they're $6,000 each one. They're expensive cameras. They're fancy devices. I have all these microphones. But that's not how you start. This is not the beginning of the journey and the content creation. How you start is with that thing that Jorge has right there. And you record content with that thing. And even the, the audio, if I'm recording this like that and I'm here recording, the audio quality at, it, at this distance is impeccable. That's amazing. You don't, you don't have to worry about anything else, all right? Maybe put a light behind you or something like that and you can record content and you can upload it directly from the phone on YouTube. Simplification is the name of the game at the beginning. As you grow and you expand, then you can go fancy and build a studio and do other things like that along the way, right? Like the one that I have here. So 69 is landscape on YouTube. One to one is the ratio. So this is a square video that you can use on Instagram and on Facebook. This is also Instagram and Facebook. It's a little bit of a wider angle. It's also square but it's not fully vertical. This one over here, two to three, is vertical, only for Facebook. This is gonna work well for Facebook itself. And this one over here is a full vertical. And this is the, basically the opposite of this one. If you guys notice this, this is a 16-9 ratio. We flip this and we have a 9-16 ratio and we have a full vertical. TikTok videos, Instagram Reels videos, uh, a lot of these, these full verticals, all you gotta do is put it into a software, and you adjust from 69 to 96, and now you have content that you can distribute in other platforms. You don't have to just record for every single platform. You multiply the content that you already have in place, and that way you get massive distribution, which does open up the door for you to be able to get more attention so you can sell more of your products and services. Let's go through the process. I'm going to show you some things, all right? She asked if, the, if there's a special software. I'm going to show you guys some softwares that we use here. Some of them are more advanced and some of them are more simple. Some platforms have video length limitations, important to note, right? They're not, they're not all the same. For example, on TikTok, this is recent. You can now upload up to three minutes in length. It used to be one minute. I know it used to be funny. We used to make fun of TikTok content. Guys, it has attention and it's growing like crazy. And as much as you want to ignore it, the demographic that might be interested in your products and services is there. We have, we have a, a, a customer from, uh, from Spain. His name is Miguel Angel. He has a brand called Sol Naturaleza. He has a YouTube channel with 600,000 followers, and we've been helping him for a while grow his audience, generate more revenue, and, and try to scale his business. We opened up his TikTok channel in a matter of six weeks. He was already at 80,000 followers on it and growing like crazy and a lot of attention and also people getting helped. So the audience is in there. My dad's um, TikTok channel, we opened it past after his passing and we started getting his content out there. The channel went from zero to 700,000, I think 800,000 almost now in about, in about three months. So a lot of attention. This is, these are not robots engaging. These are actually human beings. And you see the comments and the interaction and the people that have, oh my God, I can't, can't believe that I never run into this guy before in my life, that I never seen his content. Oh my God, I can't believe that he passed. I just applied his information and he made me do this and get better like that. So the viewpoint is a responsibility of helping all these people with your information, right? So Instagram feed and reels, 
they could be up to 60 seconds. Uh, I believe Instagram was planning on expanding that to 60, uh, to 120. Jorge, do you know if they, the feed is also still 60 seconds? Instagram feed? So you can put videos there, which are generally going to be square ones, up to 60 seconds. Twitter videos, up to 2 minutes and 20 seconds. YouTube shorts, which is the one that I mentioned, 60 seconds. YouTube videos are pretty much, you can put in long videos, especially if you have um, an established channel. They could be hours in length. Um, if you have a small, uh, uh, a, a new channel, I believe they limit you at one hour. So what is the most efficient way of creating and editing content for the maximum number of placements? That's to answer your question. It's simple, all right? So let's see. Start one, one piece of primary content. We call this primary content. This is the one content that you do, that from it, everything else gets born. All I do as a content creator, if you guys have seen my content, I'm pushing content every single day on every single platform. You will think that I'm just doing nothing but putting content. I, I don't. I actually run an organization. Natural Sim has 150 people. AGM has 100 people. I have big responsibilities. I cannot be putting content out every single day. What I do is primary content. And from that content, everything else gets built. Primary content is very simple. I actually take one video like this. This one is a Facebook ad tutorial, how to use a Facebook business manager. And that goes up on YouTube. It gets some slight edits, and this one is a nine minute video, and I just give some information. So it's a long form, horizontally filmed piece of video content. It can be posted on YouTube, IGTV, Instagram TV, Facebook, and LinkedIn, depending on the length, because uh, LinkedIn has limitations. You cannot post videos that are more than 10 minutes on LinkedIn feed, all right? So if it's less than 10 minutes, for example, this one, it can go up on LinkedIn. It can then be broken down into additional pieces of content for other plas platforms and placements. So we take this primary content and we turn it into 100 pieces of content, which is multiply like crazy. So again, we're talking about organic content distribution, getting our content seen by more people organically, taking advantage of one primary piece of content, and instead of having to do a billion of this, turning that one into a billion different pieces of content across the platforms. That's being smart with your content and with your time. So from your primary content, you can then create long form videos, one podcast episode, every single episode. Uh, anybody here has subscribed to my podcast? Raise your hand. Okay. So I have a podcast called The Facebook Marketing Ninja. I've had it for many years. I'm about to change the name soon because I'm into being a marketing ninja now, not just Facebook. But when Facebook started going aggressively, I was jumping on that Facebook advertising wave. And I started getting a lot of attention in the subject of Facebook advertising. The world has changed a lot. It's a lot more now that we need to pay attention to, not just Facebook. Uh, but I have a podcast. If you search on, on Apple, uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or on Google Play, you search for Facebook marketing, uh, you're going to find this ugly face somewhere there, and uh, probably towards the top of the search results, and I'm putting content, we were, we were doing three episodes a week, are we still doing three? Yeah, so we do three new episodes every single week. We're going to bump that up to seven videos a week. Uh, uh, it's seven videos. We take away the audio, and we turn that into a podcast. Something that we learned recently is that podcasts are great to keep under 10 minutes, short-form content that people can actually consume some content and uh, listen to it while they're driving, doing some exercise, and it's going to help them get connected with you, with your message, and they could be about anything. People are doing podcasts so they can get entertained, um, listen to music, um, a talk show, uh, talking about different things, uh, e-commerce, education, business, consulting, stacks information, about anything, no matter what your business is. There's people out there looking for information. They don't want to be listening to the FM stations anymore. They want to be consuming content over the internet. And that's what podcasts can do. So we do podcasts almost every day here. Video clips, images. So here's an example of how this, this chain starts looking. Primary content, we turn that into quotes. And I'll show you some examples in a second. They go on Facebook, they go on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn. We call them quote cards, meaning that the guys get a little message from my video and they put a little picture around it and they make it a message and they distribute it on social media. Uh, clips, 60 seconds or less. We make square videos for all those platforms and we make vertical videos for all those platforms. Audio, we, t we turned out every single one of those videos that has value, especially the ones that 
If you listen to it, you will get the value. You don't really need to see it. Like in my case, we're doing a, 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 a webinar here. This is visual. I have these guys looking at some slides. You guys are on Facebook or on YouTube, and you guys are here seeing this. But even if you listen to this, don't you think there will be value from it? You're going to get exactly what the message is. So if somebody is really busy and they don't have time to sit down and listen to this whole video on Facebook or on YouTube, but they want to learn, then a podcast is a great way for them to actually keep on getting connected. All right. Um, so long form videos, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, and LinkedIn. Those are the four platforms that we use for long form. Anything after three minutes is considered long form content videos in general. So let's see. Let's break it down into steps. So step one. That's why I wanted you guys to get the slides because you can review this. If you have staff members, you can actually have them review the slides and get this all incorporated. The, the hard part of this is getting it all started, putting the system in place. Once you put the system in place, all you got to do is keep on pumping out that primary content, off you go, right? It just keeps on rolling out and keeps on getting better at time. Plan out your content. So you can create a list of content ideas, topics, using your superpower as inspiration. This is something that I learned from my father. I learned a lot of things from him. One of the things that he taught me over the years was content will never end. I always ask him, Dad, will you ever run out of content? You're talking about there's over 2,000 episodes that he did on YouTube. Who knows how many different Facebook videos and Facebook lives we did over the years. I have so much raw content for him that I can keep on pumping content out for years and people are going to be, oh my God, I can't believe that he I hadn't seen that video. It's so much. So I would ask him, dad, do you think you're ever going to run out of content? He would be like, son, it just never ends. When you're passionate about a subject, when you really believe in it, it doesn't end. In my case, I have been talking nonstop. Any other human beings will run out of saliva. I keep on talking about marketing. Five years talking about marketing nonstop, getting on stages, webinars, seminars, in-person presentations, on the call, strategy sessions. Call. It really doesn't stop. When your mind is going on a subject, it doesn't really end. So if you're good at something, which we call a superpower, that's your inspiration. You make a list. Uh, my dad, myself, we used to, uh, he used to have a list, notes on your phone. And whenever you have a subject, that you want to talk about, you just wouldn't know. it's like a bullet point, and that's your next video. And whenever he wanted to sit down on the camera to do deliver a, a seminar or, or do a workshop or do one piece of content, he would just look at his notes and be like, what am I going to talk about today? Okay, I'm going to talk about cholesterol and the combination of medications with this. Okay, good. Let me do a quick little research right here. I got this. All right, boom. Turn on the camera. Let's go. Because that content is pretty much unlimited. It never stops. So if you really believe in that, you know it's never going to stop. It's just a matter of getting it going. It's just like you got to just get started. You move out of that analysis paralysis, implementation paralysis, and now you go into execution. And once you get going, things are going to start lining up and you start moving forward, right? So you create this list of content, and then you add to this list consistently whenever you have an idea, and it never runs out. When you're talking to somebody, like you guys sometimes, I meet with you after we're done with the workshops. When I, when I have seminars, for example, a lot of people lined up to ask me questions. I use those questions for inspiration for new content. Um, I'm also looking at content on social media and people's comments and engagement. And right there, I got more notes as to what I need to talk about. So people themselves, they feed us what we need to talk about more, especially as we get going we actually now get people to respond back. And as we start getting more content seen by more people, more people are getting value, so they want to they have more information. And now we keep on going, and it never ends, right? It's this circle that once it gets going, it will just snowball like crazy, right? Very, very important to get this going. The one thing that I'll mention for you guys that are already a little bit nervous about the whole content creation, it's always going to give you butterflies, the whole subject of creating content. It just never stops. Uh, I'm not at the level that a lot of these content geniuses, but when you talk to some of these guys that will tell you, they always feel it before you get on the stage, before you talk, before you turn on the camera. There's someone, something about it. I have had the pleasure of working with geniuses, like the one and only chick. And this is something that it's inevitable, right? They, they feel something special, especially because uh, one thing that I learned from Chick, again, many things that I learned from him over the, uh, over the time that I worked with him, was that he felt like he had a responsibility to service people. He wanted to service people. So his standard of quality was incredible. Why? Because of service. 
because of how he would actually have an opportunity to help other, 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 uh, another person, whether that's by inspiration, by education, whatever it is that he was trying to accomplish, he had this standard. And it's something that it will make you nervous. Like, I'm, I got you guys here. You took time out of your day to be here. You drove over here. Who knows how, I, how far? I have a responsibility. So it always makes me nervous. We worked our butts off to give you guys good content today so you guys can go back home and be like, you know what? Those couple of hours were a good investment on my time. But as a speaker, as a content creator, as somebody trying to make the world a better place with your content, it's inevitable that you're going to have some sensations, nervousness, some feelings of... Uh, this is going to be a little bit hard, right? It's it, it, so, something that is not going to stop. That first year of you creating content, it's mostly for you. It's not for the audience. It's for you to get comfortable with yourself, with your own voice. As you do this, then you keep on getting more confident, you keep on improving, and you feel better and better about putting yourself in front of a camera. And that's all part of the process. Okay, so step two. Take one of your ideas and record it as a long-form video. That's how you start. You press that record, you grab a, set, a chair, you sit down over here, you buy this little thing on Amazon that Jorge has right here, which is probably like $10. And uh, what's it, $10? About, About 12, 10, free shipping, Amazon Prime members, right? And then you hit record, and that's your first video content. And now you go, right? If you guys are uh, a little bit behind on technology and you have an iPhone 4 or a 6, then get that upgraded. It's an investment. Some of these companies have free iPhones for upgrade. Uh, so take one of your ideas and record it. This will serve as your primary content. Step three, extract the audio from your video. So you guys are, wait a second, how can you extract something from a digital file? Extraction is like you're looking for bones, right? On, on, it's, a, it's something for um, the physical universe. Well, this is what you will use for your podcast episodes. I'll show you guys a tool that we use for that. Extracting the audio. You don't have to do a podcast by itself. If you have the time and if you want to get it done, go ahead and get it done. I don't do a podcast for podcasts. I do video content, and from there, it becomes podcast. Step four, edit your primary content video, remove symbols, pauses, etc. Step five, find and cut clips that are 60 seconds or less. Save as both square and vertical, 916 video formats. This is a square video. Look at this example over here. So this is actually on Instagram. This is a square video. And you can see me on the whiteboard there. And then this one over here is a vertical video. And um, it's just a different format. This one is opened up a little bit. And then this one is more like concentrated, more square. And it's all about using that software. You plug in the file, and then you hit a button that says save. It asks you what format. 916 or 69, and then you save it, all right? And that's your file, and you name the file correctly. Step six, you pull quotes from your own video and turn them into images. So this is the example that I was mentioning about. So my guys, uh, I have a content team. They listen to the content, and then they see what I, what I, they hear what I say, they make notes of it, and then they become quote cards. For example, on one of my videos, I said, hey, you got to figure out how you can help people, and you can use that to guide your content creation. And they turn that into a quote card, right? Figure out how you can help people and use that to guide your content creation. It looks like I'm writing that. I'm not. My guy extracted that piece from my video and turned it into a quote card, all right? This one over here, you will inevitably succeed if you don't give up. Okay, well, they got that also from one of my videos. Never ever try to sell something without first providing value. Some people, you got to realize that they're not looking to consume video content. Sometimes they want to visually enjoy the platform. And that's where things like this do, do help you capture attention. And along the way, you can get more engagement and more following. And that's important in this environment. Nothing is more valuable than your team. Look at this one. So there's a screenshot with my entire team, and there's a little quote in the center, right? So let me show you an example. Okay, so this video right here, uh, I'm going to show you a little piece of it, maybe one minute only, so you can hear it. If you look at this video, this is the coach, Jorge, and myself, and we are on that studio right there. We have, obviously, we have the nice background, something. Again, I did not start like this. This took me five years to get here, guys. So you can still focus on cameras and little stands like that. So I have this background over here. And uh, this is a 10-minute video. Um, should I just play it? Are you good? All right. Let's see if that sound comes through correctly. And I'll show you how we convert that into some other formats. 
As you guys know, some social media uh, platforms let you have a personal account and a business account. And some of those, uh, both of those have like a pros and cons to it. So the question is, should we separate our personal account from our professional account? And which one do you use to post your content? I'll let you um, handle that one because you've already gone through both. If you have a business, you need to use your business platforms. Uh, on Instagram, for example, there are three types of accounts that you can have right now. This can change in the future. Currently, you can have a personal Instagram profile. You can have a business also called professional profile, or you can have a creator profile. And um, they're all different. And the only one that really works for social media marketing is the business professional one. Why? Well, here's an example. Damon John, when we started working with the shark, people's shark, uh, Damon John from Shark Tank, uh, he had a creator Instagram account, which the, it was logical uh, for him to have that because he's a creator. Uh, he's an artist. He's a content creator. He's so good at what he does. And he's a celebrity and they have him set up as a creator account. Here's the problem. You're not allowed to create audiences of people engaging with your Instagram profile. So that is a major, major barrier to your right. social media marketing. Damon John has products to sell. He has he, something called Damon on Demand. And if you're thing, uh, and I created an account, I think it was maybe <clears throat> 2000 and what, 2008, 2009 bring down his value on TikTok <laughs> because so, I don't have any value on TikTok. <clears throat> he does. I mean, I being lazy and go everywhere. That's okay. That's another solution. Some places you reach more people, some to some places you reach less. Yeah. But you are omnipresent. Exactly. And even if you get a little bit out of, you know, these other platforms, then you're still getting a little something. But I mean, my question was like, what's the best one if you're just going to do organic? So I, w I would suggest TikTok. I was having a strategy session the other day with, uh, it was so funny. So funny. I almost like, I almost started laughing, <laughs> but I kept my composure and I didn't make the person feel bad. But I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm having a strategy session, which people pay a lot of money for. <clears throat> Um, sometimes we, sometimes we run contests and, and people can, can, uh, can do a one-on-one -on -one with me. The point is that this person doesn't have a social media following. And then she tells me, um, which platform should I focus on? Um, I know. And, and I said, look, you should focus on everything. Like, did, I want you guys to understand something. We are living on a very unique era in this world in which you have the ability to send a message across the entire world of social media and the internet. And you don't have to get into a contract with uh, a media organization. You don't have to pay them any money. It's free. My, my, grand, my grandfather would be like telling me, dude, you need to get all over it. Like I didn't have my, gran my grandpa, if he, if he wanted to get a message out, flyers, uh, radio ads, um, t television ads, magazines, billboards. Guys, it was expensive. All right. If you're starting a business, how incredible is it? If you have a vision or a, a particular product that you want to get out into the world, even though nobody's buying it yet, but you want to get out into the world with it, how cool is it that as long as you have a cell phone device and an internet connection, you can press it once and go out to the world? So this person tells me, Manuel, but I don't think the best strategy is to, is to post everywhere. Elon Musk is on Twitter only. And I said, well... Wait a second. For some reason, do you feel that you are comparable to the richest man on world on the on the world? Do you feel that you can just post on Twitter and be like Elon Musk, and you're going to be able to take off? Guys, Elon Musk are unicorns in this planet. If he wanted to put on his content on one single placement. He's still going to go viral. Yeah. He's the richest man in the world. Every he's, tweet goes viral. He's the founder of Tesla. All right. So please do not compare yourself to these guys. If you are just like me, a regular human being trying to conquer the marketing world, you have to take advantage of every single opportunity that you have out there, which is pretty much every single platform that allows you to send a message to the world without you having to give them any money. Even though you don't have a lot of attention on it, you do it because you really want to be so, so at the bare minimum, you're saying like you can 
put uh, you can put out one piece of content and then just download it and post it across everywhere else at at the bare minimum every platform usually has their own you know if is it vertical is it horizontal or their own style and their own whatever right but at the bare minimum you could do that that's right and just you know be everywhere at the same time you can be everywhere at the same time i can tell you right now okay so a couple of things about this video all right it's long not people people don't have the time to sit down I cannot be as selfish or as uh, conceited about myself, maybe, to think that people should be sitting down and consuming this whole content. If you really are a student and you are going to learn from me, then you sit down for that whole thing. Generally, that content is going to be really well consumed on YouTube. People sit down on YouTube to consume entire pieces of content, 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But what about all the other places out there? that have enormous attention, but people are very flimsy. They only consume for a few seconds. And if you don't capture the attention in the first few seconds, that's it, it's over. They move on to the next one and you lost that chance. If I just put that video in front of them on a Facebook feed, chances are they're not gonna get to get to that value right there. I just gave them a strategy for distribution. They would have had to actually get to minute 756 to be able to consume that content. So for me to just focus on doing this, and hoping that it's gonna help me capture all these people, it's not the right strategy. Let me give you an example of what we do with this video right here. 11 minute video, almost 11 minutes, what do we turn this thing into? We call this edutainment. It's something that I learned from, uh, this actually is a word, by the way, if you Google it, it is actually a word. Um, uh, there's a, a very important person for me, his name is Jorge, not this one right here, but another Jorge, who's been our creative director in Natural Slim for 100 years, uh, 15, 16 years or so. Uh, he helps me out a lot with the content process and he says, edutainment is, the, is how we're gonna conquer the, 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 the world of attention. That's the word. We take one thing that gives entertainment and we include our own education on it. So we take one piece of content like that one that is 10 minutes and 26 seconds and we make it entertaining while still educational. That is edutainment. So let me show you what, I, what we did with that video. There's gonna be a one minute video now. This whole 10 minutes and 26 second one. This video that I'm gonna show you guys now was extracted from that video. It takes some work knowing exactly where to cut it, how to fix, how to do this, right? And um, it takes some work, but once you get a hang of it, it becomes easy. And again, you guys can hire somebody to help you get this done. AGM is an example. You can hire us and we can help you with this, or there's a lot of people that you actually can hire to help you build these little things. We, made, we can make probably around seven videos that are high quality videos, one minute videos from that 10 minute one. Check this one out. You guys are gonna enjoy this one. So this person tells me, Manuel, but I don't think the best strategy is to, is to post everywhere. Elon Musk is on Twitter only. Wait a second. For some reason, do you feel that you are comparable to the richest man on the world? Do you feel that you can just post on Twitter and be like Elon Musk and you're going to be able to take off? If he wanted to put on his content on one single placement, he's still going to go viral. Yeah. He's the richest man in the world. Every he's, tweet goes viral. He's the founder of Tesla. So please do not compare yourself to these guys. If you are just like me, a regular human being trying to conquer the marketing world, you got to take advantage of every single platform that allows you to send a message to the world without you having to give them any money, you do it. So at the bare minimum, you can put out one piece of content and then just download it and post it across everywhere else. Every platform usually has their own, you know, if, is it vertical, is it horizontal, or their own style and their own whatever, right? That's right. And just, you know, be everywhere at the same time. What do you guys think, right? So, so one this person ten tells video, me. Manuel, but one 10 minute video becomes uh, a piece of content that we can use that has a very similar concentrated message. So instead of making somebody watch all 10 minutes of it, in one minute I tell them what the value is. When somebody consumes that content and they like that content, they either click or they don't with it, 
I got them now, and I can send another message, and I can promote my products, my services, and I can bring them into my world, all right? If they see another video of mine, oh, that's the dude that was talking about Elon Musk and how you can't try to be like him, right? Um, that's basically, the, by the way, we look like, we, I always see this guy right here, I'm like, we got Elon Musk in the house right there? <laughs> yeah, he looks like him. He told me the other day that people do tell him all the time. Yeah, he can basically buy us out right now, and we just walk out, right? That's the way it is, right? Uh, but anyways, guys, the, the, the idea is how do we leverage these opportunities for content creation and how do we get a lot more distribution of our content and how do we get a lot more attention in an era in which attention, attention span is at the lowest levels it's ever been. So you've got to capture the attention fast and that's important. So if you don't know how to edit video or images, raise your hand if you have no idea how to edit video or images. All right. So a couple of options that you can do, you can do it yourself or you can hire someone else to help you do it for you. Both options are completely valid. Uh, if you want to do it yourself, it's, there's softwares out there that are free. That all you got to do is drop in the content and learn how to drag and drop some things around and you're going to be good. There we go. Great you asked, Kirby. First, let's look at how do you do it yourself. So for example, there's a video editing program called Descript. That's why I wanted you guys to download the slides. Because if you're going to um, go back to the slides to find out exactly what I talked about. So this one costs $12 a month. It's very easy to use. can form a video for any platform. One piece of content can be formatted for any platform in this one place. $12 a month, all right? It allows you to easily edit and add captions. You can even add captions on it. You can extract audio for podcasts. Whoa. So wait a second. I can grab my YouTube video and I can plug it in there, and it's going to give me an audio file that I can upload on my podcast. Oh, my God, that's amazing. $12 a month, all right? This is something that uh, on desktop, yes. This is desktop. Descript.com. Here's a website right here. Descript.com, yes. There's actually software. Um, there's mobile uh, apps right now that are really good at this, but for longer form content, it is still advisable that you use a desktop because they are heavy. And sometimes, for example, that file that I showed you guys, 10 minutes, is a one gigabyte file. That's a really heavy file for a mobile phone. So you still want to go through your desktop computers to get this stuff done. This is a, an example of this script right here. That, so the people's shark, Damon John, he made a video which is really cool, it's on the background of Shark Tank, talking about Black Friday and uh, talking about AGM and uh, how our, his marketing team can help uh, with setting up success for the holiday season. We took the entire file, we uploaded it, and it, it translates the words of uh, Damon very easily. And you got the script right there. You can turn that into uh, an article, uh, you can turn that into the audio becomes a podcast. You can take that same video file and click on a, on a few buttons, and now you have a vertical video. You have a horizontal one. You got a square one. All of it, all right? Raise your hand if you can afford $12 a month. Okay, great. Hopefully, a lot of you guys online uh, raise your hand. Image editing program Canva. Uh, this is a um, historic, this, this platform has been around for a while. It's very popular. If you want to have, they actually have a free membership. If you want to do a little bit more of the advanced things that, that, that I want you guys to do, it's $13 a month. All right, $13 a month. User friendly, thousands of available platforms for e templates for every platform. You can very easily edit images. You can drop in a picture, like for example, I'm right here. I do a smile, they take a picture of me, and I can drop that image right there on Canva. I can take some text, put it on, and now we have some quote cards. Very simple to do. And now you can take that content and distribute it on Facebook, on Instagram, all over the place, and you look like you're a fancy graphics editor. All right, Canva will help you get all those things done. Look at that, they have been promoting right now Instagram posts, video, presentation, Facebook posts, poster. I mean, please guys, technology has dramatically taken away excuses from all the lazy people out there, all right? Ali? So Ali's asking, uh, is it different than Photoshop? And the question is, yes, it's a lot more simpler. Photoshop is, you're an artist, you're a graphics designer already, right? So you're already established. You're going to be great with Photoshop. You're fine. If you have skill, you're good. But to get started, Canva is the simplest thing in the world. And they have gotten better and better and better. So as you become more of a professional, you can move into After Effects, Adobe Photoshop. You can do all these things that are more advanced. Canva is a very simple software, which is affordable, and it has a lot of the things that you can do on other programs. 
So here's an example of what we do with uh, Canva. We take that picture of me doing a podcast and we put uh, a blue background. Uh, it's easily 10 minute process right here. And then we, uh, we make me, uh, we put me on a corner and then we have the quote over here. No matter what stage your business is at, you need to be consistently collecting identities, emails and phone numbers. And they put my signature in there and we put my logo at the bottom, right? Very simple to get done. Sometimes it's as simple as clicking on a template replacing the image, putting the text in place, and you can now download it. Over here, it's gonna give you options to download, and now you have the file for yourself. $13 a month to be able to have access to all this stuff, all right, right here. If you prefer to hire somebody else, this is actually something very acceptable. That's what I did. I never learned really to use these platforms way back when. I had a, a brand called Kosia's Collection in which we did bed sheets on Amazon. A brand is still there. We sold it in 2017. And that brand, we, I had to create graphics. I didn't know how to create it. I didn't want to. What did I do? I hired people that knew how to do it. And there are places where you can find these people. For example, Fiverr.com. All right, if you guys want to know the exact... Uh, link is F-I-B-E-R-R dot com. Uh, there's places like FreeUp. There's places like Upwork. And, and there's another one that I've used in the past called 24-7 VA. 24-7 VA. And it, it's kind of weird how you spell it. That's uh, Siri right there. 24-7 VA dot com. Thank you, Siri. I don't need anything right now. Uh, 24-7 VA. That looks like geroglyphics a little bit, but... 20, um, 20, out the word four, and then the number seven. Okay, <laughs> so let me, 20, four, yes. seven, yes. VA dot com. Uh, that place right there, the first staff, right now we have 98 full-time staff at AGM. My first ever staff member that is still with me today, his name is Jay, he's from the Philippines, He's a super mega genius marketer that has built his career here with us. He's been with me for many, many years. Uh, I found him here in this place, 247va.com. VA stands for virtual assistant. You tell them what you're looking for, and they um, look for people, and then they give you resumes. Like graphic designers, Facebook advertisers, Amazon experts, customer service, whatever it is. They give you people, and then you find out how much they want. Some people want $4 an hour. 24-7 VA handles that for, for you because you have to pay them, they pay the staff. Uh, $4 an hour, $7 an hour, $10 an hour, depends on the skill. But we live in this world that a lot of people are very talented on planet Earth and they have access to the internet, but they don't have opportunities. In the US, we have one of the best economies in the world. We have opportunities, they wanna work for us. So your job is to locate these people. We have 35 United States of America staff we have 63 international staff here at AGM, full-time AGM staff members. So we live on a wide open field that we can bring in and build a team around the world. All right, and these guys are, they consider AGM their full-time uh, home. So now that your content is edited, the next step is to get it posted on all these places, all right? So I'm gonna be wrapping up in a couple of minutes and then uh, you guys, if you have a, a couple questions, we can, we can take over them. I wanna make sure that just so you guys know, we're gonna keep them at one hour because I know your time is really busy. So I'm working on putting together presentations every two weeks that are maximum one hour. So you guys can plan out not being a whole night out with us, but just six to seven, let's go. Religiously, six to seven every other week, all right? So you're gonna get it posted. What do you do for that? You prepare your captions and hashtags, you can write a caption that complements your content. You wanna keep your caption fairly short and to the point. What are they gonna get by consuming that content? You wanna find on Facebook and Instagram, right now and TikTok, hashtags are important. Facebook didn't care before, now they do. Hashtags on Instagram are, if without them you will not be discovered. Simple as that. So you gotta have relevant hashtags. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok all operate the same way. Even LinkedIn operates the same way. Even on YouTube, there are benefits to utilizing hashtags in your descriptions, all right? We're not gonna get into that right now, uh, but something for you guys to include. Schedule or post your content. So you can do this two ways. Just you can have a system in place. You can use a third party app, which we love to use over here, or you can use the actual platform itself. So options for third party, our favorite one is Agora Pulse. 
Agora Pulse connects all your social media channels except TikTok. And you can actually just go in there and publish the content everywhere and get it scheduled in one single place. One single place. Your YouTube, your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, all of it. You can connect it in one single place and you can bring in people and moderators to help you. So whenever somebody is going to log in to post things for you, all you got to do is give them access to one platform and that's called Agora Pulse. Depends on the, on the program. Uh, usually it's going to be anywhere around $100 or more. All right, but it really does connect. So I think that the introductory package, which might be a couple of profiles and a couple of people, might, might be like $30 a month. You have to look into that. Agorapulse.com, check it out. All right, we loved it. We've used it for many years. Hootsuite, I've never been a fan of it, but those are options that you can use. Preview is another one. Again, we use Agorapulse for all our clients and for ourselves to schedule our content. Schedule or post on the platforms directly. On Twitter, you can post directly and schedule. On Facebook, Facebook has something called the Creator Studio. I love the Creator Studio. It's been getting better and better and better, and it's free. Now, you can only schedule posts on Facebook and Instagram, nowhere else. Instagram is new. Before, you couldn't post on Instagram via Facebook. Now you can. So if you guys want to have Instagram and Facebook and post similar content to them, you can post it from something called Facebook Creator Studio. How do you get there? Facebook.com, you go to the settings, there's going to be one option that says Creator Studio, and you click on that, and that's going to open up this thing in which you can upload content, schedule posts, post publications, and even go live or schedule live broadcasts like this one. We're live right now on Facebook, and we're live on, yet on YouTube, and it was scheduled here on the Facebook Creator Studio. Okay, so this is also the same thing on YouTube. You can actually schedule them on TikTok. You can also schedule them on Instagram TV. They can be scheduled. And the one thing that I can tell you guys, if you guys are just getting started, last thing I'll say, if you're just getting started and you want to get more attention, a lot of these platforms, because let's say that you don't have any following, you're just getting started, and your content is not taking off just yet, and maybe you've been putting content for a couple of weeks and nobody's watching it yet, you can put a little bit of lighter fluid on it and try to get it to catch some fire, all right? And all of these platforms allow you to do that. It's called boosting. You can boost your post, meaning you give these companies a little bit of your hard-earned dollars and you help them help you, all right? On Facebook, you can boost and have them take your content to longer, wider, more reach. Instagram, same thing. TikTok, same thing. I just ran a test with TikTok. I'm going to show you guys in a second. But you can actually get more distribution of your content, whether you have a promotional video. Let's say that you have a video to promote your services. Like, hey, we're here at AGM Marketing, and we're doing workshops, and we want to have you on board, right? We should actually do a, um, a video for this right now. You should record your camera. We should do it. We're going to do it together, right? So you guys can see how simple it is in a second, all right? But... We're actually recording all this stuff right here. So we're going to create a promotional piece of content, and I can actually boost it. You know what I do? Again, we have platforms that we can make it vertical, horizontal. You guys already saw that. This is on TikTok right here. I just did this last week. You know that video that I showed you guys that has a one-minute video? You guys can see it on my, on my TikTok. Um, I, I opened up uh, the, the video on the mobile app. There's going to be an option that says Promote over here. This is TikTok, all right? Uh, and then I select, do I want more video views, more website visitors, more followers? I like video views. They all work. There's no wrong answer here, guys. If you want more website visitors, go ahead and do that. Again, this is new. You click on next, and then you're going to select your audience. You can do automatic, in which TikTok selects it for you based on whatever your content is about, or you can select your own audience, demographics, interests, things like that, right? And then... What they call this, which is super weird, all right? They call this coins. How many coins do you want to spend? All right, so 60,000 coins over four days. They're estimating that it's going to help me get 118,000 views. So I can say, I want to spend 15,000 coins per day. I think they're messing with the psychology or something. Like, they don't want you to think about dollars. They want you to think about coins, all right? It's kind of weird. TikTok is weird, right? It, it's a Chinese company, all right? Duration, four days. And then I go to the next one, estimated video views, and it says, I got to pay with my balance, right? So there, it's saying, I can give you 60,000 coins, but you got to give me $300, right? Oh, wait a second, how do I buy coins? Okay, recharge over here. And then I go and I'm going to buy coins. So with $250, I can buy 16,500 coins. Wow. 
and it has this, this um, options over here. So I go to recharge, and then even on my phone with Apple Pay, all right, I was just right then and there able to pay it. It took me about 37 seconds to set up this promotion. In a matter of three days, that video had 50,000, 40,000 something views, and I had new attention, all right? And that's what it's all about. So again, I don't pay a lot of attention to TikTok myself. I do it for my own brands, but I wanted to run this test so I can talk about it, all right? The same thing you can do on Facebook. On Facebook, whenever you post something, you guys are gonna see the option that says, raise your hand if you've seen the thing that says boost post, all right? That's been around for a while. You can click on that boost post, and then you can select your audience, and you can have it reach more people, which means if you have new followers, new engagement, when you post again, your videos get a greater chance of reaching new people. When you send a promotion, that promotion is going to have more chance of reaching new people. That's the value of building attention on these platforms. Okay, okay. She's watching TikTok videos. Um, <laughs> she wanted to get the mask. Okay, you'll see it. You can see it. You can go for this experiment until we're done. All right. You're gonna see it yourself. One thing that I noticed, all right, is that there, if you go, if you're in a different country, if somebody's posting your content in a different country, I notice that there's some videos that I cannot promote because it says this video was posted in a different country, so you can't actually promote it. Interesting. That one I posted myself, so I was allowed to do it. Anyways, Facebook has the same thing, Instagram has the same thing. You can open up an Instagram post, and if it's, you're logged in, you can click on promote, and you can promote it to people. And that's gonna help you reach more people. If you have a promotional piece that is selling something directly, go ahead and try to get some attention on that, all right? This is the way it works. This is the way of the world of marketing. Okay, wow. So we are, I'm, I'm working on the, uh, on the timing. We're 10 minutes over, all right, 11 minutes over. Uh, tomorrow, I have a big announcement for you guys on the stream, uh, for you guys here physically. You have the same QR code. Uh, we have a special surprise. Uh, I'm gonna be announcing a new exciting thing. I've always had something called the AGM Ninja Lab. You guys notice that this is all about being ninjas in marketing. So tomorrow I have a big announcement about that subject, which is uh, an evolution on the process of the Ninja Lab. And a lot of you guys are gonna wanna be there if you wanna find out if we can help you and you can afford our help with taking your marketing to the next level in this 2021 and beyond. All right, so if you guys wanna be there, you can either scan the QR code. It's gonna be like a half an hour, 45 minute announcement at two o'clock tomorrow, Eastern time. Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern time is the scheduled time for those of you guys that are watching this replay. Uh, or you can scan that QR code or you can visit agmagency.com forward slash ninjas, agmagency.com forward slash ninjas. And that's it for the presentation. Hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for being here. And hopefully you make it on the next one. All right. <laughs> we can take a few minutes to ask, uh, if you guys have any questions, um, you want to, yes. anybody has a question? I know I spoke a lot. Wow. Was I that good of a teacher? No question. That's where you get the slides, same place, all right? You're gonna have the option, you can scan that code, and that's gonna, that's gonna give you access to the slides, all right? And then um, you have the option, they're gonna give you a link there if you wanna find out what the announcement tomorrow is gonna be all about, all right? That's gonna be there. Okay, but Jesus. That's right, I used to say that, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question, Jesus. Um, a few years ago, I, had a, I, I even had content talking about how you should not boost content uh, on Facebook. And the reason for that was because the business manager on Facebook was more powerful than, uh, than just boosting a post. I wanted to get people to use a Facebook business manager so they can advertise everything inside the business manager. I got away from that because I realized that it's simple to just press a button and reach, and it's a good entry into the world of marketing, all right? It's just simple to press a couple of buttons and reach more people, boosting a post. But it's a, an absolute fact that I was against it myself. But now in this environment, these platforms are helping you reach more people, and the name of the game is attention. So I'm, an, I'm a fan now, again, of boosting 
your content so you can reach more people, and then using the Facebook Business Manager platform to generate leads, to generate sales. But again, that is away from basic. That is more advanced, and you got to really learn the world of marketing to start using, like, using these platforms more effectively. All right? Okay, good question. You got any other questions on social media, Jesus? That's it for now. Okay. All right, good. All right, so I think I wanted to show you guys something. I said, remember, anybody remember what I said I was going to show a, a little bit? Was that? I was going to show something. Go ahead and ask your question with this. Okay. So, do you also do Google Ads? Like, um, Google my business. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mean to do Google ads to get people to click on and yeah. visit your website? Yeah. Okay. Coach, you want to take that question? Uh, yeah, we do, we do offer that service, but um, the Google My Business, what you're talking about, that's the Maps service. So you just have to create an, um, your listing on there and you have to claim it. The way you claim it is you, well, there's going to be a little button that says claim my business. They, they send you a postcard in the mail that has a pin code and then that's how they verify your business. So yeah, once, I haven't verified. Do you do like yeah, yep. Once you have all that set up, we can definitely set up uh, campaigns that are going to be showing your business directly in the map section, in the search section, in the uh, YouTube ads. There's a lot of different placements that Google offers. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Look, since we're super high tech here at EGM, I'll show you guys this. I'm on my phone right here. And let me show you this. That's what I wanted to show you guys, the simplicity of this, all right? How do you boost, for example, a post? So I'm on Instagram right here. And um, Dallas Cowboys, go Cowboys. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these posts. So this one over here is the social media organic content strategy that we're doing today. It was liked by a thousand people. And it's a free, free community workshop, okay? So I'm gonna click on the top. Uh, actually, it's gonna be uh, over here. You see, it, you see it, you can't miss it, right? So it's, it's because I, I'm, I'm logged in that I can see that right here. You can see it says boost post. So look how simple this is. Obviously, this is not gonna be, let's, let's do one that I, I'm okay spreading right now. So this one, get yourself on a path that acquires knowledge every single day, okay? I see Alicia like that post, all right? I see her here. It shows some people, right, because um, people that are usually more connected with me, I get to see some people there liking it. So I'm going to click on Boost Post on this one. And then it says, choose how you want to promote. So again, this is applicable to anything that you want to promote, whether you have a little video clip that promotes your services, or whether you're trying to generate some leads because you're going to be able to add a link on it, or whether you're trying to get more video views, no matter what. It's as simple as that to create a promotional piece. And what do I want to do with a Facebook ad account without a Facebook ad account? So even if you don't have a Facebook ad account, I can actually run this. If you have a Facebook ad account, then you can actually connect it. So I'm going to go without a Facebook ad account. Okay, so I'm going to keep them separate. And then, uh-oh, this is a different one. It says that I have a restriction. Let me try something else. Boost post. That's a restriction that I told you about the other day, Jorge, on the other one. Remember that? Yeah. Let me see your phone. On yours? I think I have the same restriction. You do? Yeah. We have uh, uh, two business managers. One of them was restricted, and somehow, it's a long time ago, and somehow these things are... Uh, connected to our Instagram. So whenever we want to do, we don't run direct promotions like that, but whenever we, uh, we want to run something, it tells us that we have a restriction. It still lets us do it through the business manager. So let's see. We're going to see over here AGM. And uh, we have this one over here. Let me see if it lets us do it. has enabled two-factor. So I wasn't set up for that, guys, so I apologize. That's what happens when you do something that, uh, without prediction. Go ahead and, uh, and stop sharing the screen. 
But if you open up any of your Facebook pages, you're going to see the option to, to, um, to boost. In our case, we're, we're a little bit different, guys. So it, this, this is a, I'm inside the Facebook page. I'll show you in a second. And let me just see if I can do this over here quickly. It says that we're live. Okay, so boost post. So I'm going to click on boost post. This one says that I have to settle the account. Again, we, weren't, we didn't set up for that. But if you guys go for this process, uh, you're going to see how simple it is. If I go to automatic, get more messages, so I can see how many people have actually engaged with this one, 32 views, and I can see, it seems like I, I, I owe Facebook 89 cents on this one right here, all right? Um, what is, what are the, the results that I'm trying to get with this ad? I want to let Facebook select the most relevant goal based on my settings. I want to get more messages. I want to show my ad to more people that are likely to send your message on Facebook or WhatsApp. I want to get more leads, which is use a form to collect contact information for potential customers. You see, this has actually evolved a lot. It used to be just boosting a post to reach more people. Now you can actually get deeper into it. Like for example, if I go get more leads, I, have, I can create a new form right here, and look at this. I can even, again, I'm not even, uh, I did not practice this, guys. I'm doing this with you guys live. So I can just be like, okay, what is the form name over here? Uh, leads Marketing Services. All right? So what do I want to request from the person? I want their full name, I want a phone number, and I want the email. The more questions you ask, the lower conversion, all right? So you got to keep it simple because that's, you want to get a volume of people that you can service. Now, on the other side, the more questions you ask, the higher qualified audience you get. Simple as that. So it's, you got you to decide which direction you want to go, all right? If you keep it simple, you might get less quality people, but a lot more people come in. If you keep it more complicated and you ask more questions along the way, then you're going to get less volume, but higher quality in general. So I'm going to, you can add a custom question, like for example, um, are you currently running ads? I will probably do a better question than that. So I'm going to save this form over here. So now I created a form just like that. So I can go and, um, and I'm going to change the audience. I'm going to change my audience and I want to be definitely not Brazil. All right. For some reason, Brazil is selected over here. So I want to do United States, I can do United Kingdom, I can do Canada, um, first world countries that might be interested in our services. So I'm going to go United States, and uh, my demographic is going to be the 38-year-old to maybe potentially the 55-year-old, uh, the and uh, generally my audience is going to be more male. I'm going, to, I'm going to try them both, but look, this one is 32 million people already between the ages of 38 and 55 are males in the United States. So in order for me to bring that down a little bit, wow, can you believe how much this has evolved? The boosting is like, by itself, is a whole marketing platform now, all right? It used to be a lot more basic. So now I can be like, interest. Well, I wanna talk to people that are interested in the world of marketing, okay? I like marketing. I also like digital marketing. And I also like social media marketing. I want to look for people that are into that subject, all right? Because I want to talk to qualified people. Social media, et cetera. Let's see what it says on the audience. So it went down from 32 to now 40 million. It is still a big audience, guys. 40 million people are not going to be buying your products. I will try to keep on narrowing that down to 1 to 2 million people. Just some basics of Facebook advertising, all right? Uh, yes, but, but also if you do broad, it's going to be very random targeting. You want to you narrow down because you want to talk to the right people. Otherwise, you're going to spend money on people that are not going to be interested. Or you let Facebook choose for you. You want to choose your own audience, right? So Alicia's question was, isn't it more like expensive to narrow down? Yes, the more narrow, more specific, the more expensive, but the more quality in general your audience is going to be, all right? A million people is a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Right? So you want to try to find a lot of people. You want to use Facebook's data, 
They know these people are interested in that. Why? Because they see their engagement. They see the pages they visit. They see the posts that they comment on. What, what they know, we use that data to our advantage. So then we're going to go to save audience. Okay, great. So we have an audience already. So I can also, uh, if I don't want to do that, I can actually target people that like my page. Just them. All right, and just, hey, I want to thank you for following my content. Let me tell you about a live workshop that I have going on next week. I'm talking to people that already have connected with me. All right, so this is people that like my page. Check this one out. People who like your page and their friends. Why is that cool? Because if Alicia likes my page, then Jorge has no idea who I am. But these two are friends. So now Jorge sees the ad because he's a friend of Alicia. So now... Jorge looks at him like, who is this random Latin dude? I don't care about him. But then he sees at the top that says, Alicia likes this page. Oh, Alicia likes this page. Oh, I think Alicia's smart. Let me pay attention. So you see, other people's opinions are important for your audience. So if people like you, they're going to engage with you, right? So you can see, you can also target USA business owners. You can target, et cetera, other audience that we have along the way. So I'm gonna, we're, we're going to just select that one right there. And we're going to click on Boost Post Post Now. We're going to select a payment. This one, I have, to, I have to get it up today because I owe 89 cents. This is not what we use, by the way. Um, so it says they have been paused because I, I owe them 89 cents. All right? So I can't handle that right now. But as simple as that, guys, we just got there. You see how simple it is? Just like that, you can set up a campaign. Boom. As you get deeper into the world of marketing and you do more and you want to get more... Uh, technology and use some of the bigger things that you can do in the world of marketing, you can dive into something called the Facebook Business Manager, which is facebook.business.com. That's a whole different monster, advertising monster, and that's something else, but you got to get going. You can spend $5 on this a day, $2, $10, whatever. You don't have to get into a contract, all right? So that's uh, just so we can make it a little bit more of a workshop, okay? Great. Guys, thank you for coming. Appreciate you being here again. We have a special announcement tomorrow. Again, like I said, any of you guys that want to be, uh, if you want to talk to AGM about uh, the possibility of getting us to help you with our services, uh, you can visit our page. Uh, Adam, what is our calendar page? So they can book an appointment. Ollie, do you know it? You so if somebody wants to talk to one of our uh, marketing consultants, just visit agmagency.com forward slash contact and uh, you can book an appointment with one of our guys all right so you can find out if we can help you all right guys have a good night thank you very much for being here